Hello, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Steven Universe Future, which we'll be talking about tonight. I'm your host, Alice Bonilla, and today I'm joined by Sam Quattro. Hello. Michelle Andrew. Hello. And Dali Martin. Hey. Today we are discussing the two latest episodes of Steven Universe Future that aired tonight. So we are recording about 15 minutes after they aired. We're talking about Bluebird and a very special episode. Although I'd say both of these episodes were pretty special, if you ask me. But uh, you can find a previous discussion on Steven Universe Future episodes at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to us uh, on your preferred podcast app by searching for Overly Animated. Uh, You can also find us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Overly Animated. But yeah, we'll be diving right into these episodes. Um, We'll start with initial thoughts and then go a bit deeper in on stuff that that stood out to us. But yeah, let's uh, go first to Allie. Well, uh, how? What are your general thoughts after watching <laughs> these that, two episodes? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, well, I really liked the first one because of how. Um, first of all, we got to what is their fusion name? Bluebird, obviously. Bluebird, the title yeah. of the episode. Yeah. Hello. It was really um, like I'm glad that they're not shying away from what we left off on, obviously, in the first series and. What they did with them, her, I thought they did well. And then the second episode was just very fun. And I've missed that from Steven Universe. So I enjoyed them. It's not really what I expected, but I also didn't know what to expect because I went in blind. All right. All right. Um, Sam, how, how about you? How are you feeling about these episodes? I mean, Bluebird was... I mean, it had a notable moment that happened. At the end-ish, a couple notable things happen. Other than that, I didn't really think it was too much to write home about, honestly. A very special episode. Best episode of Steven Universe Future. I'm calling it now. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Is that like taste. volleyball? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Where was Boy, she? screaming wherever he is right now. Not here. Not here. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it was really, like, it. I got thrown. I, I like... It was great. I loved it. I love my little boy, Onion. Yay! Yeah. That's the return of back. Onion. You will get to Onion Boy. <laughs> uh, uh, Michelle, uh, what are your general thoughts about these two episodes? I think both of these episodes are solid. I, I do agree with Sam, but I think a very special episode as a whole is just a more entertaining experience. Because we get to have Rainbow Quartz 2.0, we get to see Sunstone again, Onions there, there's just so many shenanigans happening, and Bluebird I think is, like, the very end is very, like, oh, like, I did get shook by Greg's hair, like, yeah. and of all the things to feel strongly about, Greg getting a His haircut hair. shouldn't <sighs> matter that much, but it really does. It does. He's been through so much with that hair. A, yeah, he, like, he calls it his baby or something. But, like, in general, Blue Version episode, I think, is fine, you know? Like, Ali was saying, like, we... It's nice to touch back on two characters that were left kind of unresolved and and who are still unresolved. It seems they're going to come back. Mm. Um, But, like, we we all knew the minute we saw them in the intro what they were. And I like that the episode is kind of like, oh, yeah, no, like, all the gems know, too. It's not a surprise. Yeah, this show's kind of, like, done with it all in terms of, like, holding back, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate so, it. I feel like a very special episode was just more fun because it, it was a surprise the entire way through, and Bluebird was only a surprise towards the end. Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm about on the same same wavelength where, like, Bluebird, it, it feels more like a traditional Steven Universe episode. It's, with the addition, like, Steven being a little bit more frustrated than normal, but, like, you get the the build up to the final uh, fight there and the uh, lessons about like what fusion is about and, like just sprinkled in there but um yeah so bluebird is fine but like a very special episode is just like all out there weird and i think that helps it a lot to stand out and to feel like a more u- uh, unique uh, thing so I-, I would definitely choose a very special episode over over Bluebird, but I think they're both fun- functional episodes. Um, 
I don't know which one to start with, but I, I guess we uh, were mostly in agreement that a very special episode is the, the, the more interesting one, so I guess we can begin there first. Um, I want to talk about Pearl first, for some, because, like, oh. Pearl... Well, I, I, Pearl is interesting because this is probably her most comedic. She's been in a long time since maybe, say, Uncle, I'd say. <laughs> like, wow. Um, uh, at, at least... Big throwback. Yeah, well, I, in, in the long pantheon of Steven Universe weird episodes, uh, per- Pearl is just very freaked out all the time, and I am here for it. Uh, but I don't know how, how you guys uh, felt, or if you, have, if you guys have a, fa- a favorite character in, in this whole um, situation or favorite fusion, I, I think I would pick Pearl. Um, Sam, I, who, who, who do you want to shine the spotlight on in this episode? Good question. I honestly, I really like Sunstone. I just think, you know, wonderful voice, just wonderful tone, really cool and laid back, what I really aspire to be. Uh, but, you know, I we also had the other ones. The, <laughs> the um, other ones. I'm sorry. I mean, I know who having an Earth Beetle are. I cannot name you the other ones, but I like them. Yeah, like, there, there, was, there was a Nephrite mixed in there i think um, yeah and there was the 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 courts of some sorts yeah yeah I okay lo- lo- loved her she was great i loved how she remarked on the clearness of the tv despite not having visible eyes all right all right so one vote for sunstone um uh, michelle who, who 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 is your favorite in this episode Rainbow Quartz 2.0, hands down. Uh, Just because they're like, they're admitting this serious Mary Poppins energy, and I love it so much, and Onion loves it so much. And I, I honestly didn't know if we'd ever see them again, see my son so So as soon as I saw them, I was like, yes, they're back! Oh, they're the perfect nanny! They do magic! No, no, don't let Onion have the umbrella! It's not gonna go wrong! So I had the most fun with them. You're you're right. That is kind of perfect that they're being used as a babysitter, <laughs> given the inspiration. Uh, the Rainbow Quartz 2.0 has this musical number at the beginning of that. It's something about blackbirds, I think, which uh, um, fitting with the Bluebird episode beforehand. Um, yeah, she, uh, Rainbow Quartz is really, uh, really pu- putting energy <laughs> into this episode. And some, uh, Onion, for some reason, really, really, really likes the Rainbow Quartz. So good for, the, good for him. Well, um, okay. Um, Onion is a little baby boy. He's uh-huh. baby. And Rainbow Quartz is like this. Mary Poppins. TV, yeah. And my woman, Mary Poppins, this sort of like TV personality children's thing, honestly. Full disclosure, I was thinking of Lynette from The Big Comfy Couch. Was that her name, Lynette? Oh. The, the clown girl from The Big yeah, Comfy Couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. No, that is completely unrelated, but that was the child thing I was mesmerized by when I was a kid. But yeah, that's what Rainbow Quartz is all about. Just about teaching the onion about cleaning up. <laughs> Doing it well, in style, well. too, with flashy magic shows. That's what the kids like. Yeah, and the da- dancing inanimate objects. That that's always a classic to go with. Although I'll say Onion's first episode with Onion Trade should have told us that we should not trust Onion with devices that do magical things. Onion is not to be trusted with these things. Well, Pearl didn't know that, so maybe half of Rainbow Court <laughs> didn't foresee that, you know? Yes, yeah, Steve, Steven should have resisted that part, but oh well. Uh, on, onion bring, brings things to life that maybe shouldn't be brought to life, like darts, but uh, Onion will do what Onion wants to do. Um, Allie, do, do you have a, a, a favorite character from this episode? Definitely Onion. <laughs> but also, actually, the gems who are listening to Garnet talk about all the ways they're going to die, like with the Heaven and Earth Beetle. They're... They're pretty great. Um, I'm trying to think who was in the first episode, other than Bluebird. But um, well, well, we'll talk about the first episode a little bit later. But uh, yeah, uh, Onion, uh, Onion. I'm trying to think of other uh, notable Onion moments. We might as well get them all out of the way. Uh, okay, I'm disturbed oh my God. that he just like messes up his house 
Where's Medallia? Where's yeah. Yellowtail? Where's Sour Cream? Does this happen okay. regularly? Why are you just asking like... that? He has a babysitter. They don't have to be home. That's the point of a babysitter. Thought, yeah, but wait, like, yeah, she does is the babysitter. Does he just like, right? mess up the entire house all the time? I mean, maybe. I don't like that. He should, he should know how to behave himself by now. Yeah, I mean, poor... He might be free. I can't tell. That. I feel like Onion seems younger in this series than he ever did in the original shows. I have no idea. He's, he's Maybe just he's aging backwards. Maybe he's one year old now and he was like seven in the initial show. Oh, oh, oh poor Onion. Yeah, Michelle, are, are, Michelle, are you arguing that we have erased Onion's character development and he has become a flanderized character? Oh, I, I think he's he's changing his age in, in backwards order. I feel like that's the most plausible thing that's happening <laughs> right now. Like literally aging backwards, like yeah. a Benjamin Button situation. <laughs> he, he seems smaller too. So, like, if he's a, if he really is a baby boy, he can't be. We can't be too mad at him, right? Because like normal mature people rules can't apply to him. He's too young. But will he always be too young is the question. Yeah, I also, I cannot answer that. I have no idea. Yeah. He has a bird uh, video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> broccoli in his mouth for later. Oh, I love it. I love the broccoli. Yeah, there was the broccoli moment. Um, Onion makes a ransom letter saying never leave to Pearl. <laughs> it looks so like good. a murder note, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was for Rainbow, uh, right? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, like, yeah, I guess so. Their fave. Yeah, per- per- Pearl comments that Onion has a bag of hair and is asking whose <laughs> hair is it. That I like that me. we don't see it, so it could be anyone's. Maybe not Stevens. It could literally what if be it anyone. Was Pearl's. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Does Pearl have hair? <laughs> I yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a good yeah. Like physical hair that can come out. So. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Did, did did Onion pick up Greg's hair from the ocean? <laughs> oh, no, he probably <laughs> did. I stole it, and then oh yeah. Oh my god, he definitely has Greg's hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Onion later is is destroying the house. Uh, he in- enjoys being blown up the stairs by Rainbow Quartz. So that's a, like a very classic kid thing, like you know, and he, they, they do like the little animation of him like tapping his feet, like oh boy, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was really adorable. Uh, it was really uh, Onion it was never more relatable than in that moment. And it wasn't even destructive. It was just, yeah, I like playing around. So he was more I, I enjoy- well, No, yeah, he was the most relatable in that moment. And second to... No, him beating everything up in the house is second to yeah. relatable. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you related everything. to that alley very much? Oh, hell yeah. Who <laughs> doesn't relate to that? Don't you just want to go ape once in a while? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I I honestly I did used to do that when I was a kid. <laughs> I would just didn't. mess when things kid, up. Come on. When yeah. I would draw on the walls and stuff. Oh like that. yeah, just like this break. is why we love Onion. He yeah. we get to live vicariously our youth through him. So how can we be that mad at him? We want to do what he does. Well, maybe not the uh, hair thing, but you know. Um, <laughs> Sam, did did you ever break a cookie jar in your youth? No, but like, okay. Do you want to hear a Sam anecdote? Yes. Yes. Do. You don't, but yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> it's not a good one, but it's okay. So when I was a kid, I used to talk to my friends on the phone all the time. Well, at one point, our phone number got changed, and my mother neglected to tell me until I tried to call my friends, and she was like, "Sammy, I changed the phone number," and then I just went crazy. I could not. I don't like that. I don't like that our phone number changed. I don't have to tell my friends that. So I went into the backyard and I like broke stuff with a baseball bat. Yeah. What, what, what specifically did you break though? Um, the basketball, uh, rocks, probably like a skateboard. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so that was not a fun by... Sam anecdote, but that was the same anecdote that is relatable to this, but not really. Well, yeah, we're break. I, I guess breaking stuff as a kid is more common than I thought. So breaking I stuff is... because of change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, Onion is very frustrated by uh, Rainbow Quartz leaving. Do you think Onion understands fusion? Yeah, because Onion Onion loves Rainbow Quartz two point way more than he likes Steven or Pearl separately. So I think he understands. 
Yeah, because I'm just remembering that like moment where we saw like baby Steven get really freaked out by Garnet defusing, and I wonder if Onion is in the same similar situation. Okay. But uh, yeah, so so Onion uh, b- breaks stuff, and uh, Rainbow Quartz uh, her, tries their best to herd Onion until uh, Onion is, gets taken to this uh, lesson, and he pied pipers the student gems <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> Die. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they actually, yeah. Yep, nobody saves dead. them. Yeah, like they talk for way too long. They definitely hit the bottom before they got <laughs> saved. But they thought it was probably water, right? I, I forget no. the geography of the They just fell off that same as that cliff once, didn't she? Oh, yeah. I think that was the same cliff. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, then the gem cracked. Yeah, yeah. So, That's because she hit a rock, right. though. I, I can't believe I mean, uh, sh- uh, corrupted gems. Um, <laughs> but but it, he does this by, like, blowing on a blade of grass. That is something I vaguely remember kids knowing how to do in elementary school. I don't think I ever learned how to do it. Did you guys ever do that? I can like, teach you, blowing? yes. Oh, it's okay. fun. You do it with your thumbs. You keep it straight. And you oh, can that, blow yeah, on no, it. I could never do that. It's very easy. I'll teach you all. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you need to find the right blade of grass to do it. It helps yeah. if it's thicker, but you can technically do it on any grass. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that that, that concludes the the onion <laughs> content of this episode. Um, well, what did speaking you of guys think of ending... the, before we do that one? I want to yeah. know what you guys thought of the very blatant copywritten song. Wh- uh, which song? Which song? The, the very. The Mary Poppins song. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it was. Is that meant to be a parody? Or... Yeah. Well, yeah. Because okay. Mary Poppins was singing during cleanup in the in the movie. And there was a the music outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She sings the thing that goes on her finger and she sings with it. Right? Yeah. Damn, am I the only one who great. thought of Mary Poppins? <laughs> no, I thought of Mary Poppins too. You're right, Allie. Okay, if I've good. never actually watched Mary Poppins yeah, at age either. 25, should I go and watch that? Like, is that important to watch? It's a pretty I fun movie. It. Yeah. I've made it to 25 with never having seen it. Damn, you too? This is like the Green Eggs and Ham thing. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we're, 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 we're getting Mary to an Poppins age where Mary and Ham aren't the same thing. Well, I mean, Mary Poppins is probably older than Green Eggs and Ham, is it not? Yes, or... it is older. <laughs> yeah, so it's just it's it's media that grandparents have probably watched, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so, my so, grandparents I mean, are ancient. That's like my parents. Jeez, uh, okay. Alex. Okay, so sorry for having young grandparents. Anyways, um, so yeah, so with Mary Poppins out of the way, uh, we, we didn't really talk about the whole like setup of this episode, which is revealed at, at the ending where we have uh, Stephen breaking breaking down over trying to juggle his responsibilities. Um, Allie wrote down a really good quote here of, uh, I'm combining all my responsibilities into one responsibility. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just keep repeating that over and it's over fine. and it collapses. Just the animation with that on top of the voice acting that went into that scene was gold. It was so yeah, good. So very good. fluid and very funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm and sure if you like... Raveling. Yeah, I'm sure if you, like, so paused and, like, there's, like, five different, like, tired Steven screenshots you could probably pull. Yeah, we're gonna as, have to like, definitely make one of those in emoji. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, he, he collapses, Garnet gives a no. <laughs> and <laughs> like then, a very dramatic. Yeah, dr- dramatic, but in her Garnet tone. Oh. And then it's revealed it was a public service announcement the whole time. Sunstone was just showing us a video. Which is and, amazing. And it's filmed from the Dove commercial studio with like the green screen in the background, and it's it's all meta. This continues a long tradition of Garnet Fusion episodes ending up being very meta, like know, know your fusion and so on. So this is just another great installment in, but it's also at the same time quite a twist because I did not expect that the, the, until the end. Um, did you were you guys um surprised or what was your reaction to seeing? That that's how the episode ended in terms of just showing it was all a recording. I mean, it made total sense because that's the name of the episode. So of course, like it being a PSA is 
in line with that. But yeah, I mean, it was a surprise. It's never happened before. It is pretty meta. I thought it was pretty perfect, though, because, I mean, obviously it's Sunstone. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I like the fact that we're going into lighthearted territory, especially after last week and after the end of the first series and the movie and the change your mind. Everything is all so heavy, so it's nice to have like a relaxing, funny, while also serious, like educational episode. Yeah, I mean, this is really funny. I mean, even thinking about like before Stephen kind of like collapses and Sunstone and. Rainbow Quartz 2.0 are like fighting over Steven Amethyst shows up. He's just like, Steven, I need your help. He's like, what? what what's wrong? He's like, I just miss you. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen you in like, like 11, 11 minutes. minutes. And that's when Steven <laughs> kind of cracks. And I just like love it's such a funny moment. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was a good yeah, episode. I, yeah, Amethyst just showing up right at the end killed me. <laughs> it's like, oh no. This is this is this is broken, Stephen. Broken. Uh, yeah. Uh, we we also have a, a besides Rainbow Quartz. Uh, we Stephen also has to juggle being Sunstone for this safety seminar, which Garnet is not doing very well at explaining. Um, ba- basic stuff like wearing helmets, covering plugs. Um, there's a recurring gag about how you should be turning off motion smoothing, which was a big thing <laughs> on Twitter earlier this year, and I guess we got it. Oh, <laughs> we that's got it really meta. Here. Yeah, I mean, I, I recall motion smoothing being like a weird meme, like in terms of like film Twitter talking about that a lot. So it just it, it caught me by surprise, like, oh, is, is it really that important that even like Steven Universe people are talking about it? Okay. Does anybody have any strong opinions on that or is that just like a, I don't a even Twitter know what it thing? Is. It's like when uh, the uh, if, if it's activated on your TV, it makes stuff kind of look like soap operas where it's mo- where oh, stuff I is I hate that when it's to... like it's like 60 frames per second. I hate that. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It makes my brain so, hurt. Okay, so you're 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 with Sunstone on this. <laughs> yeah, on. I mean humans okay. are meant to see media at a good thirty frames per second at most. Yeah, uh, Garnet later comments that it's it's great for football, which uh, I I would not exactly espouse, but your mileage may vary on that. But uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, I'm also like there's we have these little gems that we were talking about with the nephrites. Um, the uh, I I noted the heaven and earth beetles are like holding their skateboard together. It's very cute to just uh, every episode they're squeezing the heaven and earth beetles in. I appreciate they're the effort. In love. <laughs> yes, they're in love and they want to be safe in this new world together. <laughs> They're not beetles anymore. They're yeah, little gay gems. Yeah, <laughs> little gay ladies. And they gotta be there's, safe. They don't wanna I die. have to. I wanna have a them... tiny, a tiny wedding. Where, like... And then one of them dies though, <laughs> no, and then the no, other one's no. sad. No. We don't want that. So that's why they're doing the safety seminar. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> I see what you're saying. They're trying to prevent the majority of queer early 2000s movie plots. <laughs> yeah. That's a good call. But that what was Garnet saying? Like, oh, you get stuck in something and nobody notices. Like a trash you... can or something? <laughs> yeah. Like that's terrible. <laughs> Garnet's not good at not just telling people scary things if they happen to be potentially true. It's a big Garnet flaw. At I least really there was should... a lot together. She also mentions like, hey, you want to see all the ways that you can get hit by a car? <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is funny because like if Garner got hit by a car, she kind of just like flip around and like not get hurt at all. But you know, so I I, I would enjoy seeing a short about that. But Garner's um, probably been hit by a lot of cars. <laughs> yeah, cars get messed up, but not Garner. Yeah, yeah, the, the cars hit Garner. Gar- I mean, the cars don't hit Garner. Garner hits the cars. I think is what happens. Um, any other stuff about a very special episode you guys want uh, to want to talk about, or before we move on to Bluebird? I really like Pearl's last phone call to Steven, where it <laughs> yes, looks like a yes. horror movie is happening, yes, and it's all yes. dark, and she's just so terrified. You she's like, I can like hear this him. as a kid. You were I such a good him, kid, but I can't see him. Oh no! <laughs> it's just. 
so good. Like, there's so many moments that are just hysterical and for different reasons in this episode. It's really impressive how much they packed in there. Yeah, per- Pearl is really in super mom mode there. And yeah. like, like Ali said, like, oh, you were such a good kid, Steven. I never appreciated you. <laughs> I'm sorry I never told you. Yeah. So, yeah, per- per- Pearl is a star, and she continues to show it in a, a special episode. Um, now let's uh, go over to Bluebird. Uh, I I had a YouTube TV running during this podcast, and I caught that the voice actress of uh, uh, Bluebird is Larissa Gallagher, and her IMDb. The only thing I recognize is that she voices Koala Princess in OKKO, which is <laughs> oh, wow, that's a role. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. Was on Firewatch, which is a very good game. Oh, she was on Firewatch. Okay. Well, she was a cool. uh, uh, she was the dude's wife. Oh, okay. The Australian one, because she's Australian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, b- a bunch more video game roles here than TV roles, but uh, yeah, so she's. Uh, but uh, Bluebird's voice is very unique, very Australian sounding, and overall, Bluebird is. Um, I-, I will say that I appreciate them lampshading the fact that it's very obvious who Bluebird is and not really yeah. making a deal of that. But also at the same time, like as as much effort as they do into making it obvious, it's also not that fun to, to go through. Except uh, I guess they're balancing it out with like these pranks as like freaking Steven out. But I don't know, like the, the whole setup of, of Bluebird being the fusion of the gems and nobody really believing that's evil it's it's kind of tiring just because like i'm not uh, i'm not a fan of one person believes someone is evil and nobody else believes them situations but i don't know how you guys felt about how uh, how the episode ramped up um ali how, how did you feel going through this episode i mean i felt the same way like if they focused too much on like no they can change they can change it's kind of it is getting old but also they it's going to be what the show is always about and i know that these two are gonna or this one if they stay a fusion they're gonna join a resistance with jasper and whoever else was in what is that like the steven worm gem looking yeah thing. the worm thing and the cactus <laughs> i can't they're wait they're for all gonna get to, yeah i'm just waiting for all of them to hatch a plot or something but i did like what they did with her i like i like that they you know didn't beat around the bush too much it was funny Okay, okay. Um, Sa- Sam, did you have any thoughts about how they handled Bluebird? Um, I guess it was a little bit of a subversion from what we've usually seen from Steven Universe, because usually it's like Steven's like, oh, Peridot or the Diamonds, they are they can be good. They You mm. just gotta give them a chance. Da, 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 da. But now Steven's being like, oh no, they're evil. They wanna <laughs> they wanna kill me or whatever. And the Crystal Gens are actually being more, uh, I won't say pragmatic, but they're being more optimistic than Steven is, which I guess is a little bit of a change of pace, but not one I fully appreciated, honestly, because, yeah, this has been done by the show before, <laughs> and it's a little It's dry, because it's their theme. I, I, I kind of wish Lapis was a rad now because this is basically room for Ruby, but it's instead it's, it's Steven and Lapis's role of like believing that uh, the um, eyeball or uh, that the Ruby isn't uh, isn't right isn't right. But uh, well, Lapis instead... was here for like five seconds. Yeah, yeah she she was meat morphin um, in, in her in her barn. Um, but yeah, Stephen being the angry one is a, is a turn. Um, Michelle, uh, how, how, did, how did you feel about this? I think probably part of the reason Stephen's more suspicious than the gems is because he's the one who's been getting targeted for the pranks. So I think that gives him a little more of a chip on his shoulder initially, because that's part of why he doesn't trust her. He's like, ah, oh, she's the one who's doing this stuff, and it... You know, actually, when I talk about it, it doesn't seem that bad, but something weird's definitely going on. And I think the rest of them just, like, don't see her as a threat, like, a, a considerable threat, even though they probably don't super trust her either. They're Maybe they're just hoping that they'll get reformed. 
Um, I do think it's really funny when <laughs> at the end when they're both tag teaming to fight Steve and they can't fuse. He's trying to, he's giving them the old Steven speech of like optimism and empathy, and they hate it. And like, oh my <sighs> god, it's so annoying when he does this. I know I hate it too. And that's what helps the fuse. <laughs> Because I feel like there's a that's like a subsection of the fandom that complains about that being Stephen's whole shtick and the fact that it was called out so blatantly by Aquamarine and Eyeball I thought was pretty funny honestly. It was it, it was done really well. Uh, Sam, I think you enjoyed that that part as well. I did. I mean, yeah. I feel bad now <laughs> that I do, but I'm getting. Hmm. All right, so I prefer season one ish Steven to the more recent Steven that we have gotten to know throughout the other seasons. Because Steven one, season one Steven is a good, dumb little kid who I want to hold and protect. Mm-hmm. And the other Steven is optimistic to a fault and sometimes I just don't want to be optimistic and it gets on my nerves and I'm sorry that's it that's how I feel (laughs) and so when they were like oh Steven why you gotta be like that why you gotta give like these speeches about oh and it can be about love and about supporting each other instead of down and I was like, okay, whatever, bro. And then they said it, so that was good. It was fine. <laughs> Vindication. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what makes like it acceptable. Yeah. Dumb opinions on things, but that's just my opinion. That is dumb on me. It's not dumb. It's, it's not very dumb. valid. And clearly, you're not the only one who feels that way. So that, that says something too. I mean, I agree with yeah. you. I enjoyed it, but I do agree with you. It is. It does get old. It's like they do kind of beat a dead horse sometimes. But I, I also think it's interesting that like this episode does kind of show a cynical Stephen, which is not something right. we I mean, compared to the optimistic Stephen that shows up in that speech at the end. Most of this episode is cynical Stephen, which is a, you know a, a result of teen of teenage angst all piling up together. So it, it's it's a turn certainly as Stephen continues to evolve. Although I, I generally agree, that, like season one Stephen is a totally different character to what we have today and so you may have a preference for or earlier steven um i'll also say that like a, a very special episode specifically felt very season one in terms of its humor at times like especially with onion because onion is kind of in the the season one hijinks person and uh, over the seasons he got like kind of faded away so it's always fun getting an onion episode because it reminds me of like season one feelings um yeah so with the uh, with bluebird um uh, something very cruel that Bluebird does is figures out that the gems aren't or aren't the place to target. So we got to target Greg because Greg is a human and can't protect himself. And so th- this moment comes up where Bluebird is hanging Greg off the house. Um, return of Aqua Marie and saying, you're my dad. So <laughs> the, the, that, that callback. And Greg... Cut, in order to get free, cuts off his hair, and he loses his flowing locks that I'm sure he's been growing for years and years and years. Uh, M- Michelle, you, I think you mentioned in your opening thoughts that you that you felt very hurt by this. I, it just really shook me, and I like I think it's kind of hilarious that it shook me. But it's just it's treated with so much reverence that hair, and the fact that it it came off, it was like the death of a a something. A part of Greg's past, because he has been growing that hair out since before he met Rose. It's been decades, and he's lovingly tended to it. So it is kind of really sad. I do think it's nice that Greg kind of saved himself, though. Like, he got the knife away from Eyeball. He cut his hair. He got out of that situation. Steven didn't have to save him. And that's kind of nice, because, like, Greg doesn't... he He's a very, like, soft man, and... He's not always a fighter, and I think it's, like, kind of nice that in that moment he was able to, like, help himself. But, yeah, Rip, hair, I, I'm kind of not loving his new look, and I feel sorry because he, he had to cut it out of safety reasons. But it's just not the same. It's going to take some getting used to. 
He looks like a clown. Yeah, it kind of does. It just makes him look older. I'm like, oh, yeah. now he really is middle aged. He's Aww. losing a part of his life with that hair, or not yeah. losing, but letting go. It's time Nostalgia. to let go. Nostalgia. He literally it's lets new, go into the ocean. It's like <laughs> literally. <laughs> it's so funny. Wow. I can't. Uh, the, the, does anybody support Greg either going bald or getting a wig? I support, I support whatever either. he does. Yeah, he should be able to experiment now. Yeah. Hair is yeah. free. Yeah, like, uh, we, uh, we've all seen those memes of, like, Greg totally bald and he looks like a yeah. thumb, right? So, yeah, like, like <laughs> sunburned thumb. Yeah, I, I want to see that in show. Let, let's make it happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Greg, Greg has has a tough time. But then, like, there's this, like, a nice uh, moment that he imparts to Steven at the end where it's like, well, look, I'm proud of you for believing in them. And everyone is capable of change, but not everyone wants to. Yeah, and, that's like uh, you know, the lesson. Yeah, Greg, Greg doesn't usually, that hasn't, ha, you, Greg hasn't been able to give fatherly advice in a long time, so it feels nice that there's a Greg Steven moment after a long time, so I, I appreciated that, that scene. Is that just what you do when you're a parent? You just give your ch- children life advice all the time? Yeah, uh, well, when they need it or ask for it, yeah. Oh, yeah, after moments that you could tell were stressful for the for your kid, I guess it's a thing that good parents would do. Like Greg, Greg, Greg is obviously hurt by the by the loss of his hair, but he knows that Stephen is also very stressed by all of this. Yeah, um, let's see. Here. Uh, be, uh, earlier in the episode, um, we have the the commercial that Stephen makes about little homeschool. Um, including Lapis doing her meat morphs, Peridot on the farm, Garnet's still doing yoga stuff. Um, <laughs> She's found her role and she likes it. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's apparently the thing she does now. Um, Larimar makes a brief return, just saying, like, I'm an actor, <laughs> <laughs> which, got, which got a chuckle out of me. Um, very, so a bunch of different pranks uh, happen to Steven in this episode. Um, do people in real life ever do this thing where they tape signs to your back? Yes. Like, is, yeah. is that, that's a thing? Yeah, it's okay. like a middle school thing, but yeah. yeah I would do it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I was, Sam's I was, got a dark streak. I, yeah, I was, um, I don't know. I would just do it to, like, people who I wanted off. to annoy. I was okay. very annoying. I will watch my back next Nothing time. Um, yeah, <laughs> Alex, get I, get totally, side. I, I can totally see myself doing that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good things to know in advance. Did anybody yeah. ever, like, turtle your book bag or anything? Uh, no, what is that? You Okay, so you take everything out of their book bag, if they go to, like, the bathroom Oh, or yeah. And you turn the book bag inside out, then you put everything back in, and then you zip it up. Oh. Uh, 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 that's turtling. <laughs> Oh, uh, that sucks. <laughs> well, pre- middle schoolers are mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, kids are terrible. Yep, mm. they are. I'm glad I'm not one of those anymore. Um, hot oh, takes on cold foods. To, yeah, kids don't prank people, please. It's not nice. Um, hot takes on cold foods. Tomato soup, bad. Anybody oh, else? God, oh. yes, terrible. Ew, what? never, never have you guys ever had grilled cheese before. Yes, but you don't need nasty tomatoes to make cheese good. Oh, you're so uncultured. I feel bad. It's not for you. It's what mustard's for. Dip it in that. <laughs> Mustard. There's so Must- many, mustard. There's so many and mustard is so good to you. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me, Michelle. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Cheese and mustard. You. Yes. What? Please. What? Yes. Oh, Don't bring that tomato soup anywhere. No You're thanks. not allowed in my home, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> been. He'll eat it. Uh, I mean, uh, I could eat like a cheese hot dog with mustard, but a grilled cheese? Yeah, it has to be cheddar though. That's the good combo. Yeah, who invented tomato soup with grilled cheese anyway? Some some silly person who had sell their soup probably. It's like well, spaghettios is like mostly tomato soup. I don't like that either. <laughs> well, I just I like. I, don't know. I feel so sad for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but you okay, so Ali? 
the, the the other food combination we have in this episode is uh, uh bluebird is makes food for steven uh it's a combination of clams peanut butter and grass uh, well, what is grass but celery and people eat peanut butter and celery all the time have you have you eaten the same celery? I think it's have different you things. Grass before Sam. I probably have. <laughs> well, I'll say they don't taste the same. <laughs> yeah, it's like different things. I mean, celery's more crunchy. Yes, and it has more liquid in it, which helps. I don't know. They're both they're green. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Jello and Brussels sprouts are the same thing. That is not. Well, the, that's not even close. It's so. like saying mustard and grilled cheese are the same. <laughs> Excuse uh, you, mustard versus tomato soup. We'll stay on track here. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, cl- clams ketchup versus mustard, but uh, I don't. I've not eaten clams, so I don't have an opinion on, on that. Um, yeah, so we got all that. Uh, other pranks include Bluebird uh, ha- having a knife, and the angle is such that it is quite menacing. But Pearl is like, "Oh, it's for cake." Uh, which is a good one. Um, Bluebird has garden pinned, but it turns out it's just for like stretching for yoga. Um, uh, one thing I have to say about that: uh-huh. Why do they need to stretch for yoga if their bodies are just light with mass? <laughs> they don't have muscles. They don't have bones. They don't have blood. Why do they need to stretch for yoga? It's all about the process, Sam. Like, why would they? I don't you get know. mentally focused during the stretches or something. I, mean, I don't know. I, I, yoga is very relaxing. It can be very relaxing, but I don't. Why do they? They don't. They don't have muscles. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh, ne- ne- next is a very hurtful sequence where Stephen is trashing pictures that he thinks Bluebird drew. It turns out they're amethyst oh, pictures. <laughs> that she's amethyst crushed. Pictures. That actually destroyed me. It destroyed relatable. amethyst too. Yeah, Ali, as an okay. artist, how 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 did you feel about this? <laughs> as also amethyst kin, I it was just too canon. I, like, I thought, I mean, when she came over to look at the drawing in the first place, so I was like, oh god, are they gonna go there? Make it a gag. But they did. Yeah. I want to support her art. Yeah, we, we need more Amethyst drawing. I, I, I don't feel like we, we've gotten that in the past, so that's a new development I would like to see. Um, and uh, Greg is watching sci-fi horror movies for the Blue Bird, which is a terrible idea to do with uh, jet, with space aliens showing them <laughs> what you think aliens do to destroy humans. But, you know, Greg, Greg will do what he wants to do. Well, that's um, where they learn how to, like, use the knife menacingly was from watching yeah. those movies, which was hilarious. Exactly. It's just ne- ne- never do that. Never invite an alien to to a uh, killing human party. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so a- anything else from this episode that you guys want to talk about? Or final thoughts, uh, since I guess we'll begin wrapping up here. Um, Allie? Um, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed these episodes. I'm looking forward to next week, but I'm also afraid because we have no idea what's coming. Uh, wait, do we get an episode next week? Or are they on break? We do so. have episode descriptions for next week. Okay. If you well, if I'm you want to seek it out, but it's also good to go in blind, uh, I'd, I'd say. But uh, yeah, so so we, we will be back next week. Yeah, all right. I'm excited. That that's all I have. I like these episodes, but pretty much like Sam said at the beginning, nothing super special to go crazy about. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sam, final thoughts. Episodes good. Steven Universe future is good. Yay, oh. Sam approved. Okay, two, two, two for two. Um, these episodes were good. Uh, Michelle, the final thoughts? I do think both well, these episodes are good. I also just, like, I know it's kind of a, a basic moral to take away from Bluebird, but Greg's whole thing about how everyone can change, but not everyone wants to, I think is, like, food for thought for the show and why... You know, even if it's hard to believe certain characters would change, the fact that, like, the power's up to them is, like, ultimately their choice. And not everyone's gonna have the same feeling, which is why I'm assuming (laughs) we're gonna get more of 
<laughs> all the angry gems later. <laughs> I am. I'm real excited about Wormy. I'm like, I'm really wondering where it came from and why it's so mad. It's Steven in particular. I want to. I want to learn more about Steven's pink rage. But I'm content to just have fun, funny episodes right now. Yeah, I, I'll say as well, like, these two episodes are definitely a lot more humor-leaning than our, our opening four, uh, our opening group of four, and that's that's fine. The Steven Universe is a very funny show, so I, I'm glad whenever they get to flex their muscles there. And, uh, yeah, with in terms of, like, the pink Steven through line, we, we get a brief moment of when Steven uses his pink powers to beat up uh, um, uh, Ruby and, and Aquamarine, but other than that... It seems that we took a break from that this this week, which again is is fine. Like Steven Universe has never been a show to do it to do plot in every single episode. So I'll say that these both are very good episodes, and a very special episode in particular I think stands out as uh, Steven Universe flexing its meta muscles. Um, I saw a comment on our Discord comparing it to some of OKKO's episodes, which kind of also fits because OKKO is always a very meta show oh, yeah. and. and in terms of like doing this kind of PSA stuff, so uh, that that that's, uh, go go watch OKKO OK if you like this episode. Uh, yes, I, I I'm interested to see um, what reaction this episode gets overall. It, it seems like it could be divisive, but I think overall, uh, uh, us on the podcast enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, un- un- until next week when we get to talk more Steven Universe, you can find out all the info on this podcast at overlyanimated.com. Uh, as mentioned, we have a Discord where we chat about uh, the different animated shows we cover here. Um, you can find that at overlyanimated.com slash Discord if you want to share your thoughts on Steven Universe or any of the other animated shows we cover. Uh, you can support us financially via Patreon at patreon.com slash animated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Dr. Cabbage Head. Uh, thanks to our Patreon executive producers, Ryan, Steve, Beatrice, Hugh, Michael, and Needle. Uh, besides Steven Universe Future, we are also covering uh, Ruby currently. Um, Rick and Morty is going on. Uh, we got probably Miraculous Ladybug stuff. Uh, going around uh, and a wide variety of shows that we cover um shira will probably um be continuing our our episode coverage uh, this month um yeah so so keep up with the, the other shows that we cover here as well but steven universe we will be back next week to talk about that but until then thanks for listening and we'll see you soon goodbye bye bye bye